the Thoughty OT podcast. Could you tell us a little bit about the sort of the, the core like compounds uh, present in, in cannabis and what kind of effects they have, et cetera? Yeah. What they, yeah. We don't know the answer to it for all of them either. So this is, and and then also it will vary from person to person, which is another reason why I think education is so important. But um, in a nutshell, I'm going to break cannabis up into two different types. There is like the traditional type of cannabis, like medical cannabis that people think of, which would be high THC. THC is tetrahydrocannabinol, and it is a molecule that's in the cannabis flower. So the flower is actually the part of the plant that contains the most of the active molecules. That's not to say that the other parts of the plant don't have value. Like traditional Ayurvedic medicine uses the leaves to make bong. And there's there's plenty of uh, there, there's plenty of other uh, uses for the different parts of the plants, but tr- like the flower has the highest percentage of cannabinoids. The cannabinoids are viewed as the active molecules that interact with the brain and body that mm, create THC, effects. CBD. Yes, exactly. And all the all the little letters that come after uh, uh, CBG, CBN, CBC, <laughs> CBT, CBE, CBL. I mean, it goes, it continues on. <laughs> like, and they're all very, very similar to one another. They actually come from the same starting material and we don't actually know a lot about those rare, the rare cannabinoids. So I'll, I'll rewind them and go back to THC. That's the main active one. This is the primary cannabinoid that people are thinking of when they're thinking yes. of cannabis, when they're thinking of someone getting high, you know, it's, it's associated with euphoria. It's associated with, you know, the, the mental and physical effects, like a interesting physical effect is that it'll make you cold drops your body temperature a little bit. I don't know that one. Yep. It's one of the reasons why like it's an like there's a theory out there that that's like one of the reasons why also in like desert regions and stuff, like that hash is very, very prevalent in in some of those cultures. So THC binds to a receptor in the brain called the CB1 receptor and turns it on. And it's it's that action that starts like a very complex domino effect that can lead to some of the effects. Now, if we're talking about therapeutic benefits of THC, probably the most powerful therapeutic benefit of THC is that it can increase your appetite. And that's not always a good thing. Some people are like, oh, I don't want the munchies. And it doesn't no, always happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't happen to everyone. I, I actually I haven't get gotten it my them. tablets. <laughs> I haven't gotten the munchies in years, you know. But I mean, if you're lifting, you're probably going to be hungry. But, but like... The the therapeutic benefit there has to do with people who are suffering to keep weight on, are struggling to keep weight on while they're trying to battle something like cancer, chemotherapy, or HIV. And it's it's a powerful therapeutic effect. Now the other therapeutic effects that come with it are like vast and huge. Like there's general mental health therapeutic effects, like it's an anti-anxiety. There's been some research on it being an antidepressant, and this is where there becomes a lot of gray area when we talk about it. But I'll, I'll list the positives, and then we'll go into the negatives later. But it's an anti-inflammatory, so it reduces inflammation, and that has all sorts of effects on chronic pain and skin stuff. And um, then it also reduces blood pressure. And that's really useful specifically for like things like glaucoma, but also just like in general for blood pressure. And I ran a survey earlier this year. And to my knowledge, it's the only study that's looked specifically at neurodivergent people who use cannabis and why, right? Like what what are the therapeutic benefits? Now, the top three are the top three that are the same for everyone, like for the neurotypical, the general, the general population, which includes all of us which is pain, sleep, and anxiety. Those are the three top uses for the cannabis. Three pillars of um It's the main and most. I mean, they're they're also the top uses for pharmaceuticals as well. So they're like the three most commonly used well, needs. Pain, pain pain medications can be like I mean, it's it's. It, I'm hard pressed to think of a pain medication that's like really effective that doesn't cause significant dependency or addiction in the long term. Yeah, like, I, it's difficult because pain is a powerful 
is a powerful stimuli. And cannabis is, I don't, I think it's very different in the way that it modulates pain. I mean, it, it acts upon a totally different system. It's not as powerful. I will say that. Like, I, I don't know almost anyone who would make the claim that it's just as powerful as an opioid, but it's powerful enough that if someone wants to reduce their opioid use or get off opioid use, cannabis is very powerful in helping them to do that. Like also chronic, people. chronic yes. pain aspects exactly. of it. Yeah. Like pre-arthritic stuff. I have chronic joint pain. I'm I'm hypermobile, and it helps me with that. They're very G- and then very common for autistic people. I'd say yes, yeah. Oh my gosh, with all the overlaps of like the weird body, weird brain, kind of <laughs> kind of synergy there. And I I actually think that's one of the reasons why cannabis is such a powerful tool for neurodivergent people is that there is this overlap between chronic pain, mental health, and GI issues. And those are three kind of really big, broad, I call, I've been calling them the triad of suffering because that's how I have felt about them for my life. Like a flare in one will cause a flare in the other. And then almost always that third one is going to act up because you're not taking care of yourself. You know what I mean? Like it's, it can be a really fast downward spiral into that triad of suffering. And actually cannabis helps with all three of those things. And a, a lot of the therapeutic potential does have to do with THC. 